Goodness me, Ellen, I'm here. Here. Hey, how did you end up on your back? I don't like lying on your back. And sweetie, I'm literally dripping. Hi. Hello, Grump. She doesn't do lying on her back. I was trying to shower and wash my hair. And I was basically in the middle of doing conditioner when I heard her scream. Oh, and now I'm dripping wet because the way I do my hair is I don't actually dry it until I've got some product in. So, can we manage while I go and sort out my hair and put on something to be half decent? And Caitlin's going to be here in a second as well, yeah? Mwah! Why do you keep rolling back on your back? Yeah, that is a reasonable question to ask you right now. Hey you. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm slightly less drippy now. Okay, listen to me. We're going to get you ready and up and into your wheelchair so that we can do the rest of the morning. Yes? And I need to get your sister up as well. Eileen Iluna Gillespie. You are in trouble, madam. No, you're not. Well, you were kind of in trouble yesterday because you don't get to always read stuff for your sister. Isn't that right, Mummy? Mm-hmm. I mean, no, not always, so no, it's not right. But she rides! Uh, I she does I... ruin stuff for you, that is right. But she don't like. Because sometimes she doesn't let me go somewhere because... Yeah, you miss out on stuff because of Ellen. Yeah. Yeah, that, that does happen. Ellen! Ellen! She's trying to do the blouse. What I don't like is when Ellen does the blouse, it makes me feel nauseous. Yeah, I get that. Oh, come here, I get that. I get that. Unfortunately, Alice, you have some level of control over your emotions and your reactions. Eileen doesn't. Eileen doesn't have control over it. <coughs> in this case, in this scenario, you're the bigger sister. And Eileen's the baby who does disgusting things. And that's not fair, and it's not how things should be, but it is how things are. You are the person who gets to choose, not Eileen. I know you don't get to choose whether you have Eileen as your sister or not, but you get to choose whether you're going to be annoyed and frustrated, or whether you're going to shrug your shoulders and ignore it, or whether you're going to feel empathy with your sister. You actually get to choose those things. It's just annoying when she does retch and less because everything, every time I think she retch, she's going to do the same. Yeah. And then you miss out. Because every time she starts vomiting, every time she gets ill, you miss out. Yeah, yeah I, get, I just have to miss out. And some stuff. So I had a plan for this vlog. I mean, apart from looking insane with my hair plopping, but this is how I look now at least once a week. 
uh, which is to talk about Eileen's recent doctor's appointments and the changes to her medications. But before I do that, I'm going to creak a lot because I'm sitting on a creaky chair. No, I'm going to tell you about our latest fun... <laughs> she likes the creaking. So that... <laughs> I was making me laugh. Mommy's creaky bottom is funny. I'm going to tell you about our latest fun... <laughs> Racer, not just fun, not just fun, but fundraiser. We're all making each other laugh. <laughs> You're making Ellie laugh, and Ellie's making me laugh. <laughs> yes, we're fundraising at the moment, good people, uh, because we want to be able to go and do fun and lovely, accessible activities together this summer, the girls and I. And we can't do that without some additional funds, particularly in order to pay for a carer because our carer hours were really slashed. And uh, a day out is not something I do on my own with the girls. And we have a lot of ideas of places where we want to go. We want to go to the hub in Northampton. We want to go to Whipsnade Zoo. Um, we want to just have some fairly simple days out with uh, nice playgrounds and nature and things like that but again even just a simple day out is not simple with Ellen. so if you want to help us and uh, contribute towards our fundraiser it is on gofundme.com and it's called Ellen and alice accessible summer activities i'm going to pop the link in the description to this vlog the link is going to regularly come up on the parent xp social media uh, on Facebook and Instagram as well so you can find them there uh, and if I can get an actual followable link into this video I will do that as well but it link will definitely be in the comment field not in the comment field but in the descriptions and if you still can't find it there then ask me in comments and I will share it as well this is a disgusting vent Eileen this does not look nice and I guess that all going down the sink because you can't see any good stuff. No, I'm gonna put some of the dark yellow stuff back. I know it doesn't look as good as what we like, but she still needs to have some stomach acid in order to be able to digest what we put in. Yeah, most of what I put pulled out of her stomach this morning has gone down the drain because it was not a pleasant one. But I'm not surprised considering how badly she threw up last night. Last night we were getting ready for bed. And I was congratulating myself on being early, you know, not early, but on time for once. I was actually on time getting ready for bed. And then I brushed Ellen's teeth and she doesn't really like that. And then Ellen threw up a bit of phlegm and I was like, okay, I'm going to go and get you a fresh towel. So I walked out of the room, I walked up the stairs and she cascade vomited. You walked up the stairs like... To get a new towel for her. Yeah, you, you hardly even walked upstairs. Like, you, you probably even like walked up just a few steps. Yeah, I was halfway up the stairs, so I'd been out of the room for, what, seconds? And Eileen had the bucket of shame, aka her one bowl, on her lap. She missed that completely. There was only, like, a tiny bit in it. Yeah, the, the, there was a drop. The, there was a droplet in her vomit bowl. Yeah. Uh, and I told her, aim for the bowl next time. <laughs> she hit the chair next to her. Uh, the uh, seat pillow, seat cushion, whatever we call it, yeah, on that chair, the floor, her hoist sling, her wheelchair, her top, her PJ bottoms, but not the bowl. I mean, it was so messy that when I started cleaning it up, I inevitably got some on my jeans as well. So um, we did not go to bed early last night. No, we didn't. Creak, creak, creak. At least this is funny. I am famous. I am famous. Uh, apart from setting up a fundraiser, we have also <laughs> been to a couple of doctor's appointments for Eileen. And they've been about a month apart. Uh, and I've not vlogged about them yet because I, well, I've been meaning to and I haven't had time. But they have been very interesting doctor's appointment. Yeah. <clears throat> so the and you can speak now. Yeah, the first one was with Eileen's paediatrician where I wanted to go through a number of things. The one thing that was not on the agenda for when speaking to Ellen's paediatrician was her seizure medicines, because the second appointment was seizure clinic. Uh, so we were holding off on that for that one. But 
I wanted to review all of Ellen's medications apart from the seizure medicines because they've not been reviewed in a long time and are just dosages, uh, which we've done. So we have quite significantly increased all of her medica medications. Now this one that I'm doing now, this is the Hyacinth patch and she's on one patch for three days. So one patch every 78 hours, it just sits behind her ear. This one we can't increase for several years now because it goes by age. But it's one of the medicines that helps controls Eileen's dribbling. I don't think it works because like, she still dribbles, she still dribbles a lot. She still dribbles a lot and I'm gonna get to that because that's actually an interesting thing. Um, Imagine how much Eileen dribbles when she doesn't have hyoscine though. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And then Eileen has another medicine called Silenar, which is also to help control her dribbling. And the Silenar we have doubled. We have doubled the dose. So she used to be on two milliliters <laughs> in the morning, and now we're doing two milliliters morning and night. But another thing as well is that there's currently a national shortage of these hyoscine patches. They're difficult to get hold of. Uh, so if we don't have a patch available, we can give her three doses of Silenar in a day. So two doses a day when we have a patch and three doses a day when we don't have a patch. The next thing we increased was her baclofen. So that's her muscle relaxant. And she was on six milliliters in the morning, six milliliters at lunchtime, 12 milliliters at night. So we basically combined the last two doses of the day. Rather than having six milliliters four times a day, we have six, six, twelve. Now we, chair. now we do a mm. Now we do eight, eight, sixteen. So that one has increased a lot as well. And um doctor her doctor spoke about other potential medicines as well that we can put in because basically she has very high tone she's very very tense what is this? uh that came with the t-shirt that uh, arrived in the post the other day who are you gonna put it on what the t-shirt i've been wearing it for days but i can show you later if you want are you gonna put it says it? the t-shirt says who wants a princess when you can have a shield maiden covered in the blood of her enemies the final medicine we adjusted in the appointment with Eileen's paediatric consultant was her melatonin, which is um, then a medicine that helps her sleep. Focus on her! What? Focus on her! Talk to the camera! Focus on her, not me! The camera isn't quite that intelligent, Alice. It isn't smart enough to know which face to focus on. You want smart! You need a brain. Yes, anyway, 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 we have doubled Eileen's dose of melatonin in the hopes that she will sleep a bit better. A few other things in that appointment. So Eileen has, over the last few months, Eileen has started having nosebleeds out of nowhere. Eileen's dad and I have very different approaches to this. He just goes, I had a lot of nosebleeds whenever I was run down as a child. And I go, yes, but you weren't a heavily medicalized child. Seeing as I'm the one who was at the doctor's appointment, <laughs> I went with my agenda. Like, obviously. One time, like, when Ellen had a nosebleed, this big clunk of dry blood came out yeah. of her tiny nose. Yeah. She and it's a tiny nostril. It's a tiny nose. Yeah. It's a tiny, tiny nose. We can't have big lumps in it. There's no space for big lumps in that tiny nose. Yeah. I mean, in fairness, I'm going to say straight out, I don't think it is anything to worry about. I think it is down to Eileen being run down. And I do know that nosebleeds are genetic. Uh, nosebleeds run in the family. Ha, 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 pun intended. But because Eileen is a heavily medicalized child, it should be looked into. So Eileen has now had a blood test to check her blood clotting uh, and this is important anyway because whenever Eileen's in hospital they do check her blood clotting and every time she is sick her blood clotting is, as they put on the discharge letters, um, slightly deranged. God I love medical language. But basically uh, while she is within normal levels it is cons there is one value that is consistently at the very lowest end of normal. 
So it's not abnormal, but it's not quite right. And this is whenever she's ill. So having a clotting profile done when she's <coughs> when she's not ill is actually not a bad idea. So last time she went into uh, the community nursing clinic to have her porta clash, porta clash, porta cath, porta cath flushed. They also did a blood test for that. The other thing we did was a course of an antibiotic cream for her nose, just in case that the nosebleeds were caused by an infection and if it was, then that antibiotic cream would clear it up. And then the final thing in this doctor's appointment was that I wanted Eileen back to her gastroenterologist. Eileen was under regular gastro care before she had her Mickey button. And then when her Mickey button was put in, she was discharged with right to access the services again. Uh, and so Eileen's doctor has now sent a referral request to the gastroenterologist at Adam Brooks, and we're gonna get Eileen uh, looked into mm. again. And this is because whilst Eileen is finally putting on weight, it doesn't, it's not fast and it's not regular and it's not reliable, but slowly but surely her weight is creeping upwards. Uh, she still, as you can see today, she vomits and refluxes far too much. And we need to get this looked into. I know that there are surgical options. There's an operation called the Nissen fund application. Uh, which would be a potential. I don't know what other options we have. Uh, changes in how she medicates for her reflux, potentially. But yeah, something needs to happen because this can't continue. Um, yeah, so that was the doctor's appointment. So that was a lot of stuff that happened in that. And then uh, just a week ago, Eileen had seizure clinic. So Eileen had an EEG back in March, so about three months ago and uh, the results of her EEG came in and showed no epileptic activity. Great! Now, when Eileen was little, her seizures never showed up on EEGs, but by now, they should do. And so they don't, and so we still don't know if these are actually seizures. She has a lot of spasms, she has a lot of episodes, and obviously she clearly goes into hospitals, hospital regularly with things that are going on in her body, things that don't stop until we put in phenobarb. But what is seizure activity and what isn't is really, really hard to say. Now, I was expecting that result. I was actually expecting the EG not to show anything. I was hoping for a discussion around <laughs> all of Ellen's medicines, particularly around the one called Kepra, because Kepra and puberty is very often not a very pretty combination. So I went into that appointment with, you know, almost like a best case scenario would be to just open a conversation and that's it. We had a really good conversation around all of this. What we are going to do now is we're actually taking Kepra out of Yelly's medicines. She's on Kepra and Epilim. She still has all of these episodes. They don't actually make a change. So we're stopping Kepra. So we have a five week period now of um, reducing the dose, one milliliter per dose per week. So she's still on four milligrams and then in a couple of days that's going to go down to three milligrams and then in a couple of, in a week after it's going to go down to two milligrams and we're going to remove Kepra and see if there are any significant changes to her seizure pattern. We need to keep really good track of all of her seizures, particularly, <coughs> particularly her tonic clonics. We need to have a good record of, we need to have videos, we need to write down what happens, and obviously any time she ends up in hospital that needs to be really, really carefully tracked as well. And it's the tonic clonics we're interested in now. We want to build up a picture of tonic clonic-like seizures. Over time, not immediately, but over time, the neurologist wants to change Eileen's in-hospital care plan because just like me, she feels like it's ridiculous to go through a number of steps that we know don't work. So at the moment, the care plan is 
when the Ellen starts having more seizures than we like, we give clobazam at home. When she starts spiraling, we give um, bocomedazolam at home. She then goes into hospital. She has lorazepam. Then she has Keppra loading. Then she has peraldehyde. Then she has phenobarb. And the phenobarb stops the bloody seizures. So I'm like, can, can we just bin these? <laughs> like, we have five steps that don't stop the seizures. So why do we have those five steps? Apparently, phenobarb can be given as a rescue medicine at home. So there is a potential that we change that. We change what medicine we give her. But all of this is kind of in six months time. We're going to spend six months building up a picture of what happens with the seizures, particularly without uh, Keppra. And then we're going to start looking into how we treat her. And then the really super interesting thing that happened in this appointment was not seizure related at all. But it is related to what Alice brought up earlier with the fact that Ellen still dribbles a lot. And that was when Ellen's neurologist looked at Ellen and went, she has an awful lot of secretions that she clearly she struggles with. And me and, Dr. Uh, me and, and Ellen's pediatric consultant went, yep, we know we have just doubled her dose of Silenar. Um, we've done this, we've done that. And she went, a colleague of mine at Addenbrooke's Hospital is going to run a trial on Botox to the salivary glands. Now, I've heard about this. I heard about that a few years ago. And basically kind of went, hello. Now, I've heard a lot of buzzing about this for years. And I thought the trial was already up and running because of all this buzzing. But apparently it isn't yet. Um, but in any case, uh, Ian's neurologist is going to have a chat to her colleague because she wants Ellen recruited for this. I mean, my response was definitely, yes, let's do it. Uh, when I spoke to Ellen's dad, he went, hell yeah, let's do it. So um, we're hoping that Ellen is going to have Botox treatment to her salivary, salivary, is it salivary or salivary, whatever, glands to help stop this excess dribbling that we are just barely keeping under control with medication. Yes, so that's where we're at. That is where we are at. It's uh, it's a lot of stuff happening. There's a lot of numbers to remember. I've written everything down in my trusty bullet journal, and I've even put um, like calendar reminders, particularly for the Capra. So what days we're reducing the dose, and what not. Yes, yes, that's right. That is right. Good girl, I'm gonna do your hair now and we need to get you to school and I'm gonna stop filming. Um, but yeah, that's that's everything about Ellen's medicines. And as I say, we do have a fundraiser at the moment at gofundme.com, Ellen and Alice accessible summer activities. So please contribute to that one if you can. And uh, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of my vlogs and please share them far and wide for anyone you think that this may be of interest for. Thank you so much for watching. See you again very soon. Bye.